the Chick Habit House. Uh, so at this moment, we'd like to direct your attention to the exits, which are behind you and over on this side, behind the stage. Uh, and also like to ask you to turn off any and all cell phones, any noise-making devices for the duration of the show. Uh, so please enjoy. Thank you. Descendants of the great King Cadmus, why do you sit pleading before me on the palace steps? In fact, throughout the whole city, I feel the air itself charged with incense and prayers. I will know why. And not secondhand, I come to you directly, your king, Oedipus. Father, speak to me if you can represent the rest. Tell me, should I be afraid or hopeful to see this congregation? have my ear and my hand in support. I will not turn my heart from my people in their hour of need. Oedipus, my lord, I have brought both the young and the old to you. Some here are so young they've barely left home, others are heavy with age. I am a priest of Zeus, and these are the young hope of the city's future. There are more suppliants in the marketplace between the temples of Athena and on the banks of the river. The city see yourself. It is shaken and drowned in a sea of blood. The once fertile land is now barren. Our livestock and our children are born dead. Apollo, hateful, fire-bearing god of pestilence is smiting us, killing us. Our now empty city's people fill Hades with their cry. Oedipus, we do not ask you to be a god. We know that you can do no such thing. But we count you, first among men, in matters of gods and their curses. It was you who came to our city and defeated the tyrant Sphinx who held the city in her clutches. With no help at all, you prevailed. Certainly not from any Theban or teacher that we did. A god must have guided you to such a blessed victory. But now, Oedipus, we implore you, strongest of all men, to defend us. I have seen that the counsels of the most experienced men are the most effective. Go at it, our king, and restore the city to life. Now you are said to be our savior for your victory over the sins. Let us not remember you for raising us up once, only to let us fall again. First arrival and victory was certainly auspicious. Let the same fortune smile upon us now. If you are to rule this city, wouldn't it be better to have men alive within it? Dear children, know that I am not unaware of this. I know that you are suffering, but even so, not one of you suffers as I do. 
when you are struck by hardship, the pain is yours alone, but I suffer for you, for myself, and for all of Thebes. And so you did not stir me from slumber today. I have prayed for you, spent hours seeking answers. I did the best and only thing I could. I sent my brother-in-law Creon, the son of Minoikius, to the Oracle of Apollo at Delphi. I am concerned that he's been gone far longer than necessary as it is, but when he returns, I will do whatever the god commands. Well, luck. Creon approaches as you speak. Lord Apollo, please let him have a way to save the city. He seems to come with good news. He is crowned with laurels and fruit. Come, you can hear us now. <coughs> Lord Creon, son of Minoikius, what news from Apollo? Good news. Even tragedies can have happy endings, after all. All will be well. And what you hear so far what you say is not particularly encouraging. I am prepared to tell you here in front of everyone, or we could speak in private inside. Speak for all to hear. The sorrow I bear is more for them than for myself. Then here it is. Apollo explicitly commands us to banish from Thebes an unclean thing, born of our land, lest it grow till it's incurable. What's the matter with this defilement? How can we banish? We must exile or execute the man, the unpunished murderer, who with that bloody crime brought this plague upon us all. Did you say who the murderer was? My lord, Laius was our king in this land before you revived our city. Yes, I know of him. I never met the man myself. He was assassinated, and now Apollo commands us to punish his murderers. But where are we supposed to look for them? How can we find traces of such an old crime? Apollo tells us to look in our own city. We'll only catch him if we begin a true investigation. We certainly won't catch anyone we haven't been looking for. Well, was Laius killed in the city, or...? out of the countryside, or maybe in some foreign land. He was out of town, visiting the Oracle, and never returned to us. Didn't anyone witness the crime? A messenger, an assistant traveling with Lias, anyone who might have given information at the time? Lias' entire party was killed, except for one who ran off terrified and couldn't tell us anything certain, except one thing. What was it? Anything would help. She said it wasn't one man that killed Lias, but a group of many. Thieves. Highway robbers. How would a thief have the nerve to kill a king, unless he was bought by some Theban who wanted Lias dead. We thought that might be the case, but we couldn't piece together the crime when it happened. How could you have let such a crime go unsolved? What could have been more important? The Sphinx was still around at the time. We felt we had to ignore everything else to find a way to remove her and her damned songs from our city. Then I'll reopen the investigation. We'll get to the bottom of this. Apollo has helped us heed the dead once more. I will ally myself with all of you in this search for revenge. Revenge for our city and for Apollo himself. I take this search personally. Whoever killed Laius could very well target me. By avenging him, I'm protecting myself. My subjects know that soon we will have certain victory or tragic defeat. With the help of the gods, our destiny will soon be known. Well, we got what we came for.